this is a video about oscilloscopes. This is a signal generator here which is producing the signal that I'll be analysing. It's set to 6000 Hz, the dial is on 6 and this dial for the frequency range is at the 1 to 11,000 Hz range, so this is 6000 in that case. And the amplitude setting is halfway, maximum being 5 volts, so it's about 2.5 volts there. This is the oscilloscope, this is the input here and this is the display that I'm getting at the moment for this signal. I haven't yet set the settings so that I can see the whole wave cycle at the moment, which I'll be doing in just a moment. So what settings have we got for the oscilloscope? The key ones that we'll be using are here, the time-based setting. So this is telling me uh, the time per division here. And this is on 0.2 milliseconds at the moment. Then we've got the Y gain setting here, volts per division, and this is on 0.2 volts per division. There are two settings, uh, two, yeah, two Y gain settings because there are two channels for this particular oscilloscope. The second one though hasn't got any input, so it's just giving me this horizontal line. So I won't need to use this Y gain setting. The inside dial here, that's a calibration knob that should just remain pointing to the left. So I won't be using those. Some other settings that we've got are the intensity, so I can change the brightness of the beam here. <clears throat> you, the, the channel 2 line is a nice bright line at the moment and the channel 1 is slightly fainter because uh, that beam is going much further. So we can see those faint lines at the moment. And this is the focus beam as well, so I can focus the beam and make it as crisp as possible. On the screen itself, you've got a grid overlay, and that's marking out the divisions. One of these divisions currently, according to this time-based setting, represents 0.2 milliseconds. So that distance there represents a time of 0.2 milliseconds. Across the whole screen there are 10 divisions on this one and there are eight divisions going vertically and these are my Y gain divisions so each one of these represents 0.2 volts. On the central lines, if I just move this down, I'll go over how we move the beams in a minute might now be able to see the extra divisions that are along the central horizontal line and the central vertical line. You have these extra scale markings, so they're quite useful for taking measurements. And they mark every 0 0.2 of a division. <clears throat> Other settings that we have then, this is the X position. So I can shift the position of the the beams in the X direction with that, so that can help with taking measurements. And this is the Y position, so I can shift the vertical position of the wave using that. And this is the Y position for the second channel, where I can do the same thing with that second beam there. If I want to make sure that this signal that I'll be measuring is vertically aligned, I can flick this switch down here to the ground. Now both signals are grounded, so now you can see this first, this f just signal in the first channel is just a horizontal line, and I can line that up with the middle. So that's lined up now, and I'll go back to AC for my signal. Now I'll adjust the time base and Y gain settings for my signal so that I can see at least three whole cycles on the display and then I can take some measurements to find out what the frequency is and the peak voltage. So at the moment it's on 0.2 milliseconds. If I make each division a smaller unit of time then it will spread the signal out. So you can see those vertical lines are now further apart. I can't yet see the peak and trough, 
so I need to adjust the volts per division for that. It's going off the scale, so I need more volts per division to bring that peak down and the trough up. There we go. Now I can see a whole signal there. Getting a little bit of a flickering signal there. If I adjust the start point of beams so that they line up, whoops, so that they line up with where the grid lines intersect, then I can take some measurements from that. So I know it's vertically aligned, I just need to check that it is horizontally. And because that beam isn't quite going down to the central line, what I might do is align this point the, where the wave is about to go into the negative displacement. So I'll use the X position to do that. I'm going to line up with this point on the grid. How can I do three wavelengths here? I can't quite do three wavelengths. So let's change the time base setting so I can get three on there. And adjust the X position again. So, so the number of divisions from for three complete wave cycles is two, four, five point two. So that's one cycle, two cycles, three cycles. Or it's uh, five squares all the way to the middle and then the point two. I multiply the number of divisions by the time base setting which is now 0.1 milliseconds and that comes out as 0 0.00052 seconds. I divide that by 3 because I want to know the time period which is that total amount of time divided by 3 because I did 3 wave cycles and that is 0 0.00017 Three, three seconds. That's the time period. I want to know the frequency, so I take the reciprocal of that value. One divided by that gives me 5,769 hertz. And that's frequency, see, that's just below what I've got it on the dial there. Uh, this may, this is probably got a better calibration than my signal generator so I would go with this value here. You, you can actually use the oscilloscope to check your signal generator in that way. That's the frequency. What about the peak voltage? Well for this I can shift the X position so that a peak is lined up with the middle. The middle has got those extra scale markings so I'm going to use those. And that from the middle, that's one, two, three point, I think that's 3.2 above. Now you could just do the 3.2 multiplied by the Y gain setting. I'm going to just check whether the, well, how many divisions the trough is below. And I would say that's 3.1, so not perfectly aligned. But 3.2 plus 3.1 gives me the peak to trough voltage. Uh, sorry, uh, the peak to trough number of divisions. If I then multiply that by the Y gain setting, which is 1 volt per division, so that's pretty easy, that's 6.3. I now need to divide that by 2 to find the peak voltage. The peak voltage is from the equilibrium to the peak. So 6.3 divided by 2 is 3.15 so 3.15 volts and that would be my peak voltage there. Uh, notice the peak voltage is higher than the the amplitude here. Um, there's a reason for that which I'm not going to go into here. We're just learning about the oscilloscope. So that's my peak voltage and frequency settings. Let's just go back over the time base setting and the Y gain setting. If I change the dial to smaller divisions of time, then each of these divisions is a smaller unit of time. So that means for the same wave, it, each division will occupy a smaller 
fraction of the wave cycle. So that would have the effect of spreading the wave out across the screen. So there you go, you can see the wave getting larger. And if I go to larger units of time here, then the each division will be less of the wave cycle. So then the wave diagram gets more compressed. Similarly, if I adjust the y, uh, the y gain to smaller voltages, then for the same peak voltage, I'll need more divisions to display that. So the, what the diagram will get, or the, the signal on the screen will get more spread out. And if I go to more volts per division, then I need fewer divisions to display the same peak voltage. So the signal gets smaller on the screen. But what we're trying to do when we're actually taking measurements with the oscilloscope is get the time base and the wire gain settings so that I've got a good number of wavelengths clearly displayed on the screen so I can take measurements. If I change the input signal by changing the frequency, so if I reduce the frequency, the time period will increase. That would mean that the signal the new input signal will be more spread out on the display. So we're down to about 3000 hertz there. And if I increase the frequency, then it's more compressed. These are new input signals. So I'm not changing the settings on the oscilloscope here. I'm changing the signal that is going into the oscilloscope. And then if I reduce the amplitude you can see the amplitude of the wave gets smaller and increase the amplitude, then the amplitude gets larger on the display. A neat little trick for measuring the peak voltage more easily would be to hit this button, this XY button, until we get this. So that's my signal now just being shown along a line. And line it up with the middle by shifting the X position there and just count the number of divisions from top to bottom, divide by two, and that's your peak voltage.